That time I got reincarnated as a slime is filled with powerful and dangerous individuals that stand at the pinnacle of strength. And since I already talked about Rimuru Tempest, I think it's time we take a look at his best friend, our residential weak dragon Valdra Tempest, one of the true dragons, the strongest existence in the universe and beyond. Because he plays a big role in the overall story, I'll be going over his background and his character story in this video, while for his powers and abilities, I'm saving that for a separate video. As always, there will be spoilers for the anime and light novel, so here's a spoiler warning just in case. And if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more breakdowns like this in the future. <laughs> Before I talk about Valdra, what are the true dragons? Well, they are considered to be the highest spiritual life forms and strongest entities found in the Tensra world. They are godlike beings made of pure energy and are formed through the prayers of all sentient beings. This is why a true dragon can never really die and when they do die or is killed, they will simply be reborn somewhere in the world albeit at the cost of losing some aspects of their personality and memories. Each of the true dragons represents or embodies the natural elements of the world with Valdra being the manifestation of wind, space and water. In the Tensra world, the true dragons all treated each other as siblings and there used to be four true dragons. The Star King dragon Valdanava being the oldest, followed by the White Ice dragon Valzad, then the Scorch dragon Valgren, and finally the Storm dragon Valdora being the youngest. However, Valdanava has disappeared and only three of the true dragons remained. But having said that, let's talk about Valdora and before he met Rimuru, he had quite a bad reputation, being called the incarnation of a natural disaster, a flying catastrophe and a tyrant that everyone fears. This can mainly be attributed to his free-spirited and temperamental personality, but he does improve over the course of the series. However, at the start, he was literally considered to be the black sheep of the true dragons as he would constantly leave a trail of destruction wherever he goes. And although his sisters have tried to educate him about his destructive behaviour, he doesn't really listen to them because he thinks that they simply enjoy torturing him. I mean, I don't blame him, his sister Valza's method of education is to basically destroy him over and over again until he learns his lesson. Nevertheless, he will continue to do whatever he likes and 2000 years ago, he was responsible for destroying the vampire city of Night Rose, making an enemy out of Luminous Valentine but he did feel bad afterwards. That's why sometime later, he decided to make the Great Jura Forest his domain and many of the inhabitants even started to worship him as their divine guardian. During this period, he would only attack if he was provoked and 350 years ago, the Eastern Empire tried to evade the forest and subjugate Valdora but they failed. And this led to the destruction of one of the largest cities in the empire at the time. And 300 years ago, due to a series of events, Valdra went on a rampage again, this time destroying a human city and a chosen hero was sent to stop him. Now if you didn't know, the hero was Kronoa, the alias that Chloe used when she travelled back in time with Hinata. But that's another can of worms I don't really feel like talking about here. But if you're interested, you can check out my How Powerful Is Chloe Orber video for the full explanation on this, links in the description. But anyways, Valdra fought her, lost and got himself sealed away inside the unlimited imprisonment and was left inside the sealed cave. Also, here's a fun fact, Rimuru speculated that Valdra only lost to the hero Kronoa because he was distracted by her beauty and apparently fell for her. Whether that's true or not, we don't really know because Valdra won't admit to it. Now, Valdra would spend the next 300 years inside the unlimited imprisonment and during that time, he became quite lonely until one day he would meet a curious little blue slime. Both started talking and they eventually became friends although Valdra was acting like a sundere the entire time. And to commemorate their new friendship, he decided to name the slime Rimuru and he asked Rimuru to think of a family name, so they decided to go with the name of Tempest. Then Rimuru suggested to use his predator skill to devour Valdra along with the unlimited imprisonment so that he can safely stay inside of his stomach such space while the both of them work together to analyze the skill. Valdora would use his unique skill investigator to analyze the skill from the inside while Rimuru uses his unique skill Great Sage from the outside. During his time inside Rimuru's stomach, it really helped widen Valdora's perspective on the world and it was quite crucial in shaping his overall growth. He even started to reflect on his past behaviors and some of his negative personality traits, learning to be somewhat more patient, analytical and less impulsive. But so searching aside, Valdora did have some fun when he came across the sacred text stored within Rimuru's memories. However, he still felt lonely so when Rimuru defeated and consumed the Greater Fire Spirit Ifrit, he intercepted the consciousness of the spirit before it was fully devoured. Valdora quickly became friends with Ifrit and the both of them would always watch and learn from the adventures and experiences of Rimuru. And we actually got to see many of their interactions in the spin-off anime Tensura Nikki. Of course, Valdra wasn't the only one that benefited from this because thanks to his large mana reserves, he allowed Rimuru to go on his crazy naming sprees without dying from magical loss. 
That said, after spending two years inside of Rimuru, Baldura got his freedom when Rimuru awakened as a true demon lord. This is because of two factors, Rimuru's great sage evolving into the ultimate skill with Thinking Raphael and Valdra's investigator evolving into the ultimate skill Investigation King Faust. This increased both their analytical capabilities, so it greatly reduced the time needed to analyze the unlimited imprisonment. This is also when Valdra noticed the presence of Raphael and became acquainted with her. So with that, Valdra was released inside the sealed cave, the place where he and Rimuru first met. He was given an enhanced clone to use as a vessel, and when his spiritual body was transferred into the clone, he started to alter the body according to his preferences. A soul corridor was also formed between the both of them. This meant that both their memories and experiences are stored inside each other like a backup, so that if either of them ever dies but one is still alive, they can easily be revived using that backup. But before Valdra could leave the cave, Rimu helped him to learn how to suppress his aura and he would spend 3 days working on it. However, because of Valdra's large pool of magic cubes, he needed to occasionally release some of his aura otherwise it would overflow and cause a literal natural disaster or even spawning another monster like Charybdis. But they did manage to come up with a solution later on which I'll get to in a bit. Regardless, once he could control his aura, he was now officially free and he met all the citizens of Tempest as well as some of Rimuru's friends and allies. He also met Remorus when she came to Tempest to warn about Walpurgis and befriended her after he introduced the sacred text to her. Speaking of Walpurgis, he was asked to stay behind in Tempest when it happened, but he would later reverse summon himself through the skill Storm Dragon Summon to attend Walpurgis. And when he arrived, he met his niece Milim and even fought against her. In true weird fashion, he started fighting using his newly developed Valdra style killing arts, which included moves from Street Fighter and even Dragon Ball. Now, what's impressive about the fight is that rather than just fighting, Valdra actually managed to notice that Milim was only pretending to be mind control and that he simply played along. If this was the old Storm Dragon, he would have just fight without noticing anything, but he's still terrible when it came to reading the room. Because after the fight, he exposed Luminous Valentine as the real demon lord to the council, and even later when Hinata and the Holy Knights fought against Rimuru, he unintentionally revealed the secret that the god of Luminism is Luminous herself. I can see why Luminous hates the Storm Dragon so much since he always ends up spoiling her things, but at least he was apologetic about it and did regret what he has done to her up until now, even taking an embrace of death like a champ. Anyways, they eventually found a way for Valdra to release his aura when Rimuru decided to let Remorus build her new labyrinth in Tempest. Initially, he was hesitant to help but after Rimuru pitched the idea of him becoming the king of the labyrinth, he was quickly on board. That's why besides Weed Dragon, he's also known as Galidora because of how gullible he is. So Valdra was placed on the 100th floor and Remorus turned the area into a room fit for a final boss with large thick stone walls that allowed him to be in his dragon form. He was also given a fully furnished private room where he can relax in his human form and read his manga. Now, the labyrinth wasn't only a place for Valdra to relieve himself, and he actually had quite an important role to play, serving as a magic cube battery to spawn monsters, produce magic steel, and keeping the labyrinth running. But besides that, he also helped with a lot of the research and development work, even discovering Dragon Tide, a new type of matter. And he even cultivated one of the strongest warriors in the labyrinth, Zagion, by teaching him his Valdra style killing arts. So to reward his hard work, Rimuru agreed to make Ifrit Valdra's new assistant. They used the dragon type skeleton body for Ifrit and Valdra being the cultured whip that he is, used his will to influence the appearance of Ifrit causing it to somewhat resemble Aisha from Damachi. But this form was short-lived because after Valdra gave Ifrit the name Cheris, he became strong enough to overpower Valdra's will and return to his original form. Afterwards, Valdra continued to spend his time in the labyrinth, even joining Rumu as the Dungeon Dominators, and when the Founders Festival came, he was seen selling tempeyaki under the name Alias. Not really smart, but yeah. But moving on, the Eastern Empire invaded and for the first invasion, Valdra simply stayed inside the labyrinth because he wasn't really needed and they easily defeated the first invasion. So during the brief ceasefire, Rumu held a reward ceremony for his subordinates and he even gifted a jacket to Valdora. And Guy Crimson actually came to visit, but this time he was accompanied by Valzad, much to Valdra's dismay. Valzad apparently wanted to have a slow talk with her brother, but before he was dragged away for torture, Rimu managed to convince her to be more gentle with him. She decided to accept the suggestion, although later she still gave Valdra some education in the labyrinth, leaving him with injuries everywhere. Afterwards, the Eastern Empire would attack again and this time it was led by Emperor Rudra along with his elite forces including Valgren. However, this time Valdra had no choice but to fight because his sister had destroyed the top 50 floors of the labyrinth and he didn't want the others to get hurt. During the fight, he was doing surprisingly well as compared to how he was before he met Rimuru because of a few reasons. 1. He had acquired an ultimate skill. 2. He no longer relied on brute force. And 3. His fighting style was unpredictable. I'll be talking more about the fight in the follow-up video, but essentially he managed to pressure Valgren enough that she had to fight seriously and even acknowledging him as an equal. 
However, she was only a distraction and Valdra was hit by Lieutenant Kondo's kamikaze bullet, a powerful attack that pierced through his defenses, and in a weakened state, Emperor Rudra used Regalia Dominion on him, and since Valdra's willpower was quite strong, he might have been able to resist the effects, but because he knew that Regalia Dominion might affect Rimuru through their Soul Corridor as well, he was focused on severing the connection rather than defending himself in order to protect his best friend. Luckily, he was able to separate the core of his heart from his body beforehand, so only his body has fallen under Rudra's control and his consciousness was still protected. When Rimuru came to save him, he managed to make contact with him through thought communication and with his help, Rimuru was able to locate the core of his heart and predated Valdra's entire body. Now that Valdra's core was inside Rimuru, their soul corridor was reconnected and the mana seal, the newly evolved Wisdom King Raphael took the chance to work her magic on Valdra's Investigation King Faust and evolved the skill into the ultimate skill, Chaos King Nilahotep. Then using Summon Storm Dragon, Valdra was reborn and his sister Valgrin was also freed from Rudra's control. So with that, the Mana Smiker and Phantom King Feltway revealed themselves and the Eastern Empire was officially defeated. And during the second Walpurgis, he revealed that Valzad has fallen under the control of Michael and they concluded that the Dragon Factor of Valdra was their target all along because they wanted to resurrect Valdanava using the Dragon Factors of the True Dragons. So for the upcoming war, he stayed behind in the labyrinth again, but this time, he has his prized pupil Zagion with him so he probably doesn't need to worry about fighting alone again. Now I think this is a good cutting off point and now all we need to do is wait for the new volume to see what will happen to Valdora. But honestly, seeing how much she has grown throughout the series, going from the destructive and arrogant flying catastrophe to the current patient and easygoing whip dragon just proves to me that Tensra has some really amazing character writing and development and that everyone including Valdora is capable of change. But anyways, that's it for part 1 of my Valdora character breakdown and it was quite fun looking at his background and overall story throughout the series. But what are your thoughts on our residential Weep Dragon? Leave your comments down below. Also if you enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a like and make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification button so that you know when part 2 comes out. As always, thanks for watching and stay safe everyone.